finally, we're on to today's objective. We're going to do some word problems of domain and range, and we're going to do that with discrete and continuous functions again, because eventually you'll come to see this as a very easy topic. Out of all the things we're going to learn this year of difficulty, domain and range is pretty low on that, but it does take a little bit of thinking the first time you're learning it. We have talked about functions, and we have talked about domains separately. We've said that domains are the x's, but if the domains are the x's, then if I give you a list, if I give you a set of domain, then you should be able to take this set and say x equals 2 and plug that in here. Well, now that we know about functions, we would say we're going to find g of 2, we're going to find g of 3, and we're going to find g of 4. If we're given the domain, then that means that they gave you the x's. If x was 2, then that would be negative 3 times 2. Plus 1. That's negative 6 plus 1, which is negative 5. If x was the number 3, then that would be negative 3 times 3 plus 1, which is negative 9 plus 1, which is negative 8. If x was 4, then we're going to do negative 3 times 4 to make negative 12 plus 1, and this makes negative 11. It didn't ask you to just find the answers for these, it asked you to find the range. So then we put these numbers into a range, and that range is going to have negative 11, negative 8, negative 5. If you remember back when we did arithmetic sequences, you can see that the change between each of these numbers in the range, the, chain, the difference between these two is a plus 3, and the difference between these two is a plus 3. Don't start making those connections whenever you don't need to, but that's just how um, one thing is kind of similar to the next thing in math. We'll do one more example together, and then you'll have to do some on your own later. Find the range. So we're going to have to make a set for r, again, given the domain. These are the x's. We're going to plug in negative 1. f of negative 1 will be 2 times negative 1, which is a negative 2, minus 8, which makes negative 10. The next one we have to do is 0. That's going to make 0, 2 times 0 is 0, minus 8, which makes negative 8. This one's negative 10. f of 1 will be 2 times 1, which is 2, minus 8, which is negative 6. Finally, f of 2 is going to make 4 minus 8, which is negative 4. We're going to throw all these together into the range. Negative 10, negative 8, negative 6, negative 4. Done. Now let's do the reverse of that. Let's find the domain if they give you the range. If they gave you the range, they didn't give you the x's, they gave you the y's. If these are the y's, then these are the answers. You're going to put a 10, you're going to put a 16, and you're going to put a 19. So negative 3x plus 1 equals 10. We're going to solve this. We're going to move the 1 over there. We're going to subtract 1 from both sides to get negative 3x equals 9. And then we're going to divide by negative 3 to get the answer x equals negative 3. If I divide both of these sides by negative 3, we get 3 as the answer for that specific range. Now let's do it again with 16. 
negative 3x plus 1 equals 16. We're going to subtract the 1 first. Subtract 1, subtract 1. Then we're going to divide by negative 3. If I divide by negative 3 on the left, it just goes away. If I divide by negative 3 on the right, I'm going to get negative 5. There's the second answer. Okay, so I did those first two, and then now we just have to plug in 19. 19 is the y, which means it is replacing all of that. So you're putting 19 equals negative 3x plus 1. Then you're going to subtract the 1. 19 minus 1 makes 18. Then you're going to divide by th negative 3. Negative 3 dividing on the left will cancel out. Negative 3 going into 18. Negative 3 going into 18 will make negative 6. So let's remember these numbers. Negative 6, negative 3, negative 5 domain, negative 6, negative 5, negative 3. Let's do it again. They gave you the range. You need to find the domain. If we're finding the domain, we're finding x. If they gave you the range, these are the y's. So we're going to take this all of that and put these numbers one by one. 12x, well, 12 equals 2x minus 8. We're going to add 8. 20 equals 2x. Divide by 2. 10 equals x. It's going to take up too much space. 14 equals 2x minus 8. Let's add 8 to get 22 equals 2x. If you had to divide both of these by 2, 2 fits into 22 11 times. I can fit one more up here. 16 equals 2x minus 8. The first step is going to be add this 8 over here. We're going to add 8 to the left to make 24 equals 2x. Then we're going to divide by 2. 2 dividing goes away. Divide over here and you make 12 equals x. How I did the last example, this is how you would show your work without showing each tiny step. These steps are baby steps. You've learned how to do this since sixth grade. You don't have to write that when you're doing a ninth grade class. I mean, if you need to, then go ahead and do it. But eventually, this will be all that you need. You just need to show, if I move the eight, it's gonna show up over here. If I divide the two, it's gonna show up over here. Again, change, and this is going to change. So our answers were 12. 10 and 11. So we have 10, 11, and 12. Based off of this pattern, we can tell that the next one is going to go up by one more, and this one is going to go with 13. 18 is going to be 13 for x. Which means the domain will be 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, I want you to try this one. And then at 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, here are the answers. You should have seen that it was super easy to do because all we had to do was divide each of these by 5 to get the x. Here's something that we kind of did last class, but, but maybe we can do it again anyway because it doesn't take any time at all. Please write these examples into your journal. And then we're just going to turn these answers. These are the answers. These are the inputs. 
the inputs are the x and the answers are the y. Another word for answers that you're probably going to see sometime, maybe even today, is output. x is the input, y is the output. So we're going to turn these from inputs and outputs to just ordered pairs. If that's x, then the x is 2, the y is 1. If inside this parenthesis is x, then negative 3 is x, 5 is y. 0 is x, negative 4 is y, because four, negative 4 is the answer, 0 is the input. 1 is the input, 13 is the answer.